Christmas Day is the children's, but the holidays are youth's dancing time. The holidays belong to the early 20s and the teens, home from school and college. These years possess the holidays for a little while, then possess them only in smiling, wistful memories of holly and twinkling lights and dance music, and charming faces all aglow. It is the liveliest time in life, the happiest of the irresponsible times in life. Of course, since I recently turned 35, my views on this time of year vary a bit. Now this season fills me with nothing but frustration and dread. The bitterness of the cold, coupled with the frenetic pace of the holidays, induces just excessive consternation. However, I take solace in the fact that I share this anger with every other person on the internet making worse lists of hit songs. 2022 is best described as the spaghetti western of music. It's filled with nothing but cowboys and Latinos, and a bunch of rehashes of stuff that wasn't as good as it was before. Let us revel in our negativity. Tis the season. And yes, the time has come to count down. <laughs> The Top 10 Worst Hit Songs of 2022. As a devout critic of social media, I realize that the stance of hating TikTok appears trendier as the months trudge on. But TikTok just serves as the latest in a string of apps that make it easier for its users to shovel their hastily made garbage into the zeitgeist. I am a lost boy. Just a mere five years ago, Vine hits clogged the arteries of the Billboard charts due to their influencer-driven reach, short lengths, and bot streaming. Everything old is new again. I'm in a field of dandelions, wishing on everyone that you would be mine. Not content with the manipulation of one app, Ruth B had another song from Five years ago, get used to hearing that, make the tail end of the DJ intelligence list this year due to the traction it gained from TikTok. Watch out for that 2026 DoorDash single to come packaged with your next lunch. The consensus I found for this song seems to refer to it as a longing, borderline cloying love song. Unrequited love has always served as a popular songwriting topic, sure, but this one's shortcomings practically make it pull in the opposite direction. Maybe it's the way you play your game. No one in their right mind refers to someone's spitting game as charming. Young Love probably won't bloom at your local rap battle. Uh, I am really confused as to why you're writing a song about a guy who you only feel okay about when he smiles. I feel okay when I see you smile. If that's all you feel, perhaps, girl, you're not actually in love with him. Nothing echoes the grandness of love quite like a resounding considering Ruth B has only had success through the apps on her phone maybe her idea of romance comes from those DMs she has on coffee meets bagel not to mention well I was looking at the origins of dandelions Ruth B songwriting inspiration for this was to find a pretty word to theme the song around she then decided to look out the window and lo and behold, what did she find out there? A dandelion. That is the songwriting genius that makes the DJI charts, everybody. Dandelions in literature typically symbolize healing from one's pain. Of all the flowers Ruth could have chosen for lyrical imagery, dandelions rank up there as one of the worst possible choices for this song's purported themes. I feel like Ruth had to intentionally choose dandelions for her song because she painfully forces the word into the chorus to the point where she can't even pronounce it right. I'm in a field of dandelions. dandelions has four syllables, girl. You are not standing in line at a dandy mini mart. Then again, you may have better luck finding love at a truck stop gas station than with this song. Send a line into the wind you go. Won't you let my darling know? 
Uh, dandelion seed heads come apart in the wind and create a new field of flowers not too far from the source. Even though her voice comes apart on those high notes just as easily as the flowers in question, Ruth B must think they stay together and float overseas like the 100th Luftballon. Granted, invoking the imagery of nuclear war doesn't feel out of place considering the borderline industrial production on this thing. This song seems about 15 years too late. It has the feel of a Colby Calais or a Corinne Bailey Ray. So maybe if it was released in like 2008, it would have been a little bit more successful. We may have felt better about it. Listen, I feel like I'm not to play the president Ruth B. Defender here because I think it's a fine song. I don't think she deserves all the hate everybody on this list is giving her. That being said, it's not a perfect song. Some of those notes towards the end. That you would be mine. Like, I, I appreciate you, Ruth. But that being said, she's definitely not the greatest singer, and she's definitely struggling to hit some of those notes. This is amateur hour stuff. Let's show you on the internet. UltimateGuitar.com has the guitar difficulty for this tab listed at absolute beginner. Then again, Song BPM has the tempo, 80 beats per minute, mind you, listed as danceable. Danceable to whom? The vibe just gives very much a filler episode of a sitcom that had to be made, which I guess makes sense that it got popular on TikTok. This song sounds like it belongs in a college campus coffee shop, complete with a burnout beatnik on bongos, shuffling through lyrics on a mounted iPad, and an audience about as captive as Flicky's in Sonic 3D Blast. And they're gone. And you know, I'm also thinking too, since Ruth B's first big hit was Lost Boy about Peter Pan, maybe she has a Peter Pan syndrome, and maybe her music is just, is just stuck in this immature phase. Unfortunate doesn't make the song any good. Ruth is lucky her dandelions got caught in this second wind because she's about to find out that the only thing more fleeting than love is her career. Dandelions need some weed killer. Don't forget to tip your barista. Speaking of singers whose 15 minutes have clearly elapsed. If you and your mom and your sister and your job and your broke ass if this song could've just come out when I was in high school, ah, wouldn't have probably been with a lot of guys I was with. Could've served me some good. Such a good anthem for like a shitty guy, you're just like, ah! The song I felt was very tired, not really, you know, creative, you know, just this girl who's very upset and is getting back at her ex who she thinks cheated on her. Uh, the video, I was very disappointed because it was kind of fun. Uh, but then it abruptly ended, in my opinion. It would have been fun to have the boyfriend come in and find it. Um, the one positive thing I can say about the song is that if you play it at one and a half times speed, uh, I thought it was a little bit better. I find it painfully ironic that someone lashing out at someone else's creative endeavors does so in this focus-grouped slog factory-made to climb the charts. And besides, Gail, we already have a perfectly serviceable alphabet bait and switch. Let's hear you sing the alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, to cook you up. <laughs> Sometimes songs surprise me with their entries on these lists. When the DJ Intelligence list drops, it usually has 30 or 40 songs that I'd never heard before. And this makes sense. Different songs have different regional popularities. I first heard this song on May 14th, 2022, three months after it released. Rachel and I drove north to Coloca Estate Winery to case the joint for a wedding later that year, using the parlance in my gig logs for those of you that watch those. And this next song appeared on the June 2022 mainstream radio compilation for promo only. Once we both heard it, we both knew that it guaranteed a spot on the worst list should it qualify. And it did. I could do this for hours and hours and hours. I could do this for hours. She's done a lot of things for hours and hours. Gosh, the independently wealthy have so much more free time than the rest of us. This song made both Billboard and DJ Intelligence year-end lists, yet no one seems to talk about it. 
They should, it's terrible! Apparently, Money Long freestyled this song over a stock YouTube beat while washing dishes. And 20 minutes later, she had this song. Yeah, that sure tracks, doesn't it? Yours, mine, ours. I could do this for hours. Let's be starting off strong with what the song title is, Hours. Sit and talk to you for hours. Ooh, look at the like, double use of the term hours. Like, hours, O-U-R-S, and hours, H-O-U-R-S. Ah, homonym, ah. Look at her double meaning. Vocabulary word for you kids, homonym. Homonym. Two words that sound the same but mean different things. Except kids should not be watching this, so. Sit and talk to you for hours, hours, showers, the towers, it's devoured, I'm empowered, you give me a superpower. The fat cat sat on the hat, saw a rat on the mat, got a fat hat and chat with a gnat that he's pat in a vat that was flat. Oh yeah! I promise, not every single entry is going to have a Sesame Street clip to accompany it. And yes, I made that joke back in 2017. Fed. Head. Said. Bed. Head. See the red head being fed bread on his sled made of lead as he sped to be wet. But he fled instead out ahead off the dead in his bed. And he said, hey, bitch. But because the last song was from 2017 and it's all about reusing stuff from the past. Yeah, it fits now too. When not cribbing from Rhyme Zone, Money Long's miasmic runs try desperately to obfuscate how little content this song has. I don't know if a certain number of repetitions would fall in the sweet spot to make this work, but she went overboard on this chorus. I could do this for hours and hours and hours. I could do this for 12 sleepless hours later. If she says it again, I'm gonna have to put it on the worst list because it's too many times. In this, okay, good, she stopped. I think she's got a good voice, but... <sighs> Remember how I said this beat came from YouTube? Yeah, you can tell. I love me some sevenths in my chords, but interesting colors of individual chords can't hide your basic four, five, one chord structure. You need more in your slow jams than just slowness, especially when you're 47 beats per minute, toe the line between sexy and sleepy. Also, literally no one wants to have sex for hours and hours. Nobody. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants it at all. You can, you can sleep for hours. I would sleep for hours and hours. Twelve sleepless hours later. Some notes, if you're going to be doing that for hours and hours, proper hydration is key. Make sure to take snack breaks and check in with your partner and use a lot of lubrication. I don't usually do this, but um... <laughs> you don't normally sing. This is off your third album! Money Long has more notches in her belt for her songwriting contributions, but honestly, I don't like a single song she ever wrote. Give it to me, I'm worth it. Baby, I'm worth it. A dollar store talk dirty. Love so soft, you ain't had... The song that tanked Kelly Clarkson's career so hard she had to pivot to television. Like a bitch. A song called Gang Bang that is significantly less sexual than you would think with that title. The worst Rihanna song. California king beds are narrower than regular king beds, you dope. Just the tiniest note for whoever directed this music video. Um, Giuseppe Verdi wrote a very famous opera called La Traviata, which centers around the demise of the lovely courtesan Violetta over the course of a year from tuberculosis. And, you know, the, a great theme in the opera is the passage of time, but the Met once put on a production where a gigantic clock featured prominently on the stage, and the production was panned as overly heavy-handed because when we have so much temporal symbolism within the music, we do not need a giant clock in the center of the stage reminding us of the passage of time, let alone a thousand clocks on the wall of an otherwise empty apartment. Just a note. Oh, I like that she's showing clocks and like feeling them up a little bit. She's like, ooh, it's a clock. She's giving him FaceTime. Mmm, FaceTime. Ah, oh, double entendre there. Look at that. Is the song going to end when it reaches midnight? Like, is that how long we have to wait now? <laughs> like, it's the do like it's the doomsday clock or something? Yes. <laughs> Three minutes to midnight, please. Rorschach is sitting in the background. 
getting on his like toes. Mm -hmm. Sing along, people. Hours and hours. Oh, somehow I'm wrong. Hours. Here we go again. Hours. Hours. Very brave of her to show up to this music video wearing the bag that oranges come in from the supermarket. That's a strong choice from a confident woman, and I could appreciate that. Yeah, you'd be like sore from that. <laughs> Regarding the title, the song is called Hours and Hours, despite the missing vowels. It does not stand for hers and hers. Even though many in the LGBTQ community thought so, directly increasing the visibility and popularity of this song on TikTok. I'd like to think this song didn't resort to queer baiting to get popular, but since I can't confirm that, that has no bearing on this song's placement. It does, however, allow for a nice segue. Speaking of queer baiting, Oh man, the worst of the ABCDEFU clones. Boyfriend probably would have been bottom five or so of the year for me, at least. It's not even the theme of the song that bothers me so much. It's just Dove Cameron as a performer, trying to be Billy Eilish light, but just, I think, failing completely at it to the point where I don't know what her sound is, and I'm just not convinced of any of her performance of any of this somewhat dark sentiment. What a choice to have a song in 2022 about an LGBTQ trying to convert someone. Dove Cameron's lukewarm, Break up with your boyfriend, cause I'm bored. Sounds like a press conference no one wanted. This girl owes a lot to Muse's cover of Feeling Good from 2001. And, I'm feeling good. and she looks like she'll end up a new Princess Diana with the way she speeds through that tunnel. A flute rock 200, please. Greg Ham rocked the flute as men at work topped the charts singing, I come from a land here. Emily. What is down under? That's correct, and I regret to say we are out of flute rock. Oh. <laughs> oh, you got that right, Ken. Hey, let's go on a safari. Uh, let's talk about Down Under. Was it your goal to take my mood down under with this song? Because that's what you did. It's no secret that in 2022, pop music has had a bevy of poor sampling choices. You've seen these in other videos. You'll see it further into this video. But this serves as the only straight remake on the list. Now, I know nothing about Lude, but a quick bout of research shows that he hails from Tasmania. I bet some of you expect a Tasmania reference here, but honestly, I remember nothing about the show. I feel like the original is already a pretty solid dance tune. Maybe it's not the most like maximal song out there, but sometimes less is more. And it definitely seems like a weird case here where I think a lot of the quirks and a lot of the fun parts of the song are kind of sanded out and removed. Say what you will about Men at Work's original, but it reeks of early 1980s Australia. Or at least what we Westerners thought Australia comprised besides prisons and deadly animals. Predating Crocodile Dundee by five years, Men at Work dropped their first album mere months after MTV launched. The channel threw both Who Can It Be Now and Down Under in heavy rotation because it was the early 1980s and Australian was as good as diversity got back then. I mean, <laughs> the song's fine, I guess. Better than this interpretation! Traveling in a Friday combi. I didn't think it was possible to suck the fun out of a song as much as they suck the fun out of this song. The original was upbeat, fun, light. This is the opposite. I'm not usually one to jump on the modern pop music as just too gray and depressing bandwagon, but man, Down Under by Lou makes me want to. Supposedly Lou made this Down Under remix for the younger generation to relate to. The only problem with this song, really, is that it's completely unlistenable. Not a huge deal. I first experienced drum and bass back in 2005 once I joined my college radio station, shout out WHUS, and came across some KJ Sokka. Here's the jungle beat. Uh, 
This dude blew 17-year-old me away. That said, nowadays I tend to find the genre the same way many look at dream theater. Technically impressive, but devoid of any substance. In fact, this song is in 17-8, so try to tap your foot to it. But uh, we just won a Grammy, so I'm glad we didn't listen. Drum and bass has struggled to escape its status as a niche genre. That Pink Panther song, though, from last year did fairly well. That song only clocks in at a minute 35, so it knew the downsides of such an aggressive genre. Down Under clocks in at just over two and a half minutes, but it feels like it takes forever. The most pressing question I have goes like this. Why this song as drum and bass? One particularly striking annoyance about the song is the key change. When I hear songs in a different key than I'm used to, my natural inclination is to get less excited by them. This lowers the original Down Under and even its iconic flute line three full steps, and it is natural for the human ear to just feel very blah about that. It's the way music works. It completely saps the original of any of its hokey charm, and while getting Colin Hay to re-record his vocals is nice, it wasn't like the man had that tight of a schedule otherwise. I only have to endure two verses of this, so it can come in at 2 minutes and 39 seconds. Perfect for the almighty TikTok and Spotify. But if I heard this out of the club, my only reaction would be to go out and refill my drink. I wonder how telling Colin Hay, the guy who wrote the song, Hey, by the way, we won't be needing your third verse, went. This sounds like a mashup of early MTV and, well, the MTV Films theme. Paging Kurt Loder. I won't bother to analyze the lyrics too hard since they came out 40 some odd years ago, but okay, look, this song was always stupid. I come from oh, you're from Australia? Me too! Okay, well, uh, see you later. The end. The end. That's it! A five second exchange of acknowledgements is a flimsy ass premise for a song. Uh, hey, Larry David! Hey, hey, hey. Hey. Harkening back two years shows that I never really liked songs like this, but at least ILY attempted to honor the theme of the original by an attempt at an ethereal soundscape, vain as it may be. This sounds slapdash. This song is to the original what modernization is to the design of McDonald's, stripping everything notable and memorable about the original, leaving just this dull, lifeless, shabby square cube, a shell of what used to be. And that's sad. And the worst part about it is that it reminds me of that Ludo song I absolutely adore from like 15 years ago. Lude oh, is a funny artist name for the most unsexy song I've ever heard in my life. You're more likely to hear this song in a crematorium than a bedroom. I have nothing but love for my Australians watching this. All two of you. But this rework needed more work. This type of song only sounds good to its homeland when its entire population gets COVID at the same time. And that proved true here. I, I feel like there's a lot less personality to it. I think it's the biggest thing I'm trying to get at is while it's far from the worst thing to come out this year, it's not great. And if it never got played at the club again, I think I would be just fine. Mixing the original with such an alien industrial surrounding comes off like Taz in Escape from Mars. A novelty at best, and not worthy of another play at worst. I'll see you at the party. Larry, are you going to the party? No. Okay, no, we'll be right back. <laughs> Speaking of trends best left forgotten. Is this what happens when you try to hire Daft Punk to score your Gran Turismo game and all you can afford is some guy named Last Monk? Have we come full circle? Diddy, the king of overused and obvious sampling, gets one of his few original beats sampled, except compressed to hell, more repetitive than a money long chorus, and with a video that I swear wants to be an NFT when it grows up. Reddit loves this track. But Reddit also loves Andrew Tate, so you know, take that as you will. All right, I really hate to borrow from Todd in the Shadows here, but sometimes 
things end up serendipitous. One guy sampled the goddamn Rick roll. Never take a L no more. Never take a damn thing slow. And it was actually one of the better ones. What? Never take a L no more. Never take a damn thing slow. All I know is trace this dough and get more to me. Are you familiar with the artist Young Gravy? Unfortunately. As a rapper, Young Gravy makes a very strong case for the return of segregation. In all honesty, this song's placement on the list has nothing to do with its sample of Rick Astley. As someone far too active on the internet when the Rick Roll started gaining traction, it only saw internet fame due to randomness. Someone linked to it. Nothing about this song deserves the ire it received. Its only crime consists of filling the void that Chuck Norris jokes left in their wake during the mid-2000s, back when internet humor thrived on somethingawful.com before all its wannabe terrorists migrated over the Truth Social. Remember, DJ Intelligence ranks based on accumulated song requests, and while Running Up That Hill ended up at number 52 on the DJI list for 2022, somehow this song made it all the way to 29? All right, so I wrote this script in December of 2022, and then in January 23, when I started making revisions, it already dropped down to 31 because there was a weird discrepancy of when the list formally came out versus the early access that I had. So it is dropping little by little. So there is a little bit of positivity in this video. People don't like this song as much. Hooray! It's a choice. We're reaching a new era of sampling where the artists are not old enough or savvy enough to know the original sample but they are quite familiar with the prior use of the sample. I'm sure this guy is not old enough to remember Rick Astley, but he certainly remembered the Rick roll. And I think the same thing happened with Big Energy. She does not know what the hell Tom Tom Club is, at least until she had to get the band writing credits, but she certainly heard of Mariah Carey. But unfortunately, what this reminds me of is when you keep re-recording on a VHS tape and the picture quality gets worse each time you use it. Young Gravy's shtick revolves around not taking himself too seriously. But people do that when they suck at something, just as a defense mechanism. Oh, I never wanted to succeed in the first place. Can't you see me winking through all the artifice around me? Yeah, no, eat me. I feel like I've only heard about it through young people I work with talking, and I'm like, you're making this up. This would have been a, a YouTube, like, comedy music video from, like, 2006. Yeah, like, Lonely Island? Yeah, but apparently, you can just do that and make money. The first sign that he sucks? He slowed the sample down. Oh, can the little baby not whap that fast? Of course, maybe a faster flow would help us ignore these terrible bars. Gravy got cheese now, that's poutine. Oh, that's not poutine. You need fries on the bottom. The topping on the food does not equal the food itself. Speaking of names, I feel like Young Gravy's actually really embarrassed about his rap name because he tries so desperately hard to make it work in these puns. I'm good. Bonnie Gravy Crock. <laughs> Please, the only talent an outdoorsman has is avoiding death. Gotta be dirty dancing now, the yelling gravy slazy. Yeah, that's just the opposite of the last one. Pull up with a Zelda and a beach and a daisy. Either this guy wants to pander to no end, or he simply rattled off the only video game characters he knew. Poor kid might become a man if he catches a glimpse of Bayonetta. I do like that he chose the name Young Gravy, though, because Old Gravy kind of gets that film on it when it congeals and the texture's all terrible, so Young Gravy is definitely the way to go. Honestly, the fact that they never did, never gonna give, never gonna give, never gonna give, that part, I feel like that had a lot of sampling potential. Underutilized. A lot of Instead of the material. breakdown with the girls who are, mm, Young Gravy, you're so fine, like... They could have done the never gonna give breakdown instead. It would have been. I don't know, man. Maybe he is so fine though. I mean, his hair was certainly fine. I mean, that was a pretty magnificent quad. Because I know that, like, I'm gonna show up to work and there's gonna be like some like 19 year old line cook working who's gonna just nonstop talk about his own kind of goofy rap thing, and he's gonna be like a, a worse version of Young Gravy. It sounded like basically this is a love song towards the 80s by a guy who looks like he was born in 2001. I'm just he's like, he's like Blake Shelton's younger brother. He's like, you're never gonna amount to anything, you know, gravy. He's like, hold my four loco. 
if Four Loco was a person, it would probably be him. He's a goofy dude. I don't know. No. I, I, I don't know about you, but There's I really certain... get super strong Dahmer vibes from that dude. We'll listen to the song, and then you can have some pizza. Some people use the COVID lockdowns to uh, grow their creativity. Some did not. You know, fucking beige suit with a kangaroo. Is, is Young Gravy from Australia, or is the kangaroo just for show? We live in an era where anyone can make their own songs, but the amateur DIY feel has had its time. You need to put forth effort. This sounds like a fourth tier verse on epic rap battles, but bereft of humor. So a fourth tier verse on epic rap battles. Hey, look what we have here! A transfer slate with a keyboard! Trying to be freaking here! Young Gravy seems like the kind of perpetually online dork to see this list. I'd put money on him anonymously annotating his own lyrics on Genius. So listen, kid. Betty, parentheses, get better at rapping. Alley oop without the hoop and call me Jerry Stackhouse. Flex the rainbow, bang it like some Skittles. Like the guy took all the lyrics that he has written in his entire life. <laughs> from various references throughout time throughout throughout his time and he's just like fuck it we'll put them all in one song what's your baby mama at the crib and blow her back out shorty filipino and she call me manny back out you don't get a race swap by proxy based on the people around you speaking of and leave them private girls alone that's it that's the entry Hello, Torgo. My name is Sergio. I graduated from the class of 2020 from UC Berkeley, and I'm absolutely excited to be here. Thank you for having me. This song, I, I really was not fond of at all. There was very little in it that I could really uh, latch on to. It's kind of the, the sound of their voices. There's a, quite a bit of auto-tune in this one. And at the same time, he has that sort of country drawl from sort of a country sort of music thing, and the combination is an acquired taste, to put it one way. Having spent a lot of time in the theater with people, um, you know, in Broadway-esque situations, I can kind of see why these girls would give this guy the slip. I just... I just... I... Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. I know I'm fine, but the money makes me handsomer. Walk around smelling like a come up in the answer for her pop. Welcome back to the worst list, Russ. You can help usher in the other returning entrants, but for now, step up and receive your licking. We both know that I'm a walking lick. Can anyone tell me what he means by lick? Urban Dictionary refers to a lick as a lesbian, which, no, this isn't Drake we're talking about. Say that you a lesbian, girl, me too. Are any y'all into girls like I am lesbian? or a side hustle, which, no, that doesn't work in the context of the song, or, what? I, I doubt he knows. Ross is so white that him typing in urban of Urban Dictionary counts as a hate crime. I'm 5'6", but the money made me 6'5". He's gonna need a lot of money. I'm 5'6", but the money made me 6'5". 11 inches of money, huh? Well, a stack of 1,000 singles measures 4.3 inches. This is some math here. So it appears Russ is feeling himself over having $2,558. I never thought I would hear a rapper go off about the size of his COVID stimulus in quite this way. Man, if I was rich, I would be like seven foot eight. No, I'm so broke that even though my license says 6'6", six, six, I'm like 5'11". <laughs> oh no, he's manless. You don't like me how you think you do, I like it though. I know I'm fine. But the money makes me handsomer. Russ sounds awfully proud of this song. A YouTube comment has him saying that this song is talking about how certain women view me. To them, the money makes me look better than I do. To them, the money makes me taller. I don't mind it though, devil devil cry cry clink clink clink. Well that settles that then. Every musical decision sounds wrong. The way he sings the possibility of paper. The possibility of paper. Lives in my head rent free and it needs an eviction. The beat limps along but fails to sound either sexy or skeevy enough. Everything about this sounds outdated. Especially the passenger reference in 2022? It's cool though, I ain't mad at you. I let it go like passenger. Like the guy took all the lyrics that he has written in his entire life. Wait, you said it's by Rush? Rush. Something about Rush. Like moving pictures? I'm a salesman! <laughs> Pipe? Walk around smelling like a come up in the ass. That's fucking brave, man. Because someone could cut up that line and just like walk around smelling like cum. 
<laughs> like you gotta really believe in yourself to be like, no, no one's gonna do that. Somebody's gonna do it. I guess I just did. Like, come. That's all I wanna do is this thing. Like usually a lot of songs are like too fast or they do techno to them and they're like hard to get like a nice like groove to But it's boring lyrics and it sounds like he's forcing everything to rhyme with handsomer Isn't it also correct to say more handsome? Isn't handsomer like the wrong English lesson? You're welcome. So we've learned homonym and we've learned more versus adding the E-I but I'm still not mad at the song. After Best on Earth two years ago, I firmly believe Russ will take his modest earnings and spend it all on Amaranth nudes, completely oblivious to the abuse her husband administered. Like, I've got money, and that makes up for all of these things that I'm really, really insecure about, that I'm going to lay out in detail. Like, yeah, I'm 5'6", I'm not that good looking, but I got money, so... Ooh. Get this gutter trash out of the conversation before he comes around the track again. Speaking of coming around the track again. What are we doing here? Uh, Pitbull is now owner of, or part owner rather, of a NASCAR team called Trackhouse Racing, which is a project that is a mix of racing team and community development project. But more of Pitbull's work is gonna be in the community development project part of it. It does not belong in the music song. I like track house racing. I wanted Ross Chastain to win. Look, championship last year, but there's no way this works. No way. Who is this for? In theory, it's for NASCAR fans, but there aren't a lot of NASCAR fans who are into Pitbull. I'm not. What you have is a case of trying to meet this new audience and you get the Zac Brown band involved. And the Zac Brown band has exactly one song I like, which was I Play the Road, which I learned in a NASCAR commercial. What do you think the craziest thing I've seen working as a contractor might be? Uh, old woman's asshole. <laughs> <laughs> no. Ah, something even crazier! One of the methods of criticism I try to avoid in these videos entails the faux outrage at a song's mere existence. Contorting my face into that of a YouTube partner thumbnail and proclaiming nothing but overblown hyperbole after hyperbole doesn't help prove why I feel a song deserves its placement on these videos. It tells you, the viewer, nothing. I know most of you don't give a damn about the content of the video and just look at the order of the songs. I'm half tempted to reveal the rest of the list right here just to scare you off. That said, that all said, seriously. What the hell were these three thinking? Pointers in the paddock in my piece. I push a peak. Cop new hammers for my pee. We don't want no peace. I might have chosen a letter other than P. Constantly referring to things as P throughout the song makes me think you guys would enjoy some yellow snow. Look, sometimes I feel like I have to truly justify a song's placement on a worse list of a certain year. But Gunna, Future, and Thugger made it so much simpler. I'm glad the song's only like two minutes and change long because if this is the song, or as like Simon Cowell would do, that's enough. 20 years ago, Simon Cowell or Plastic Face Simon Cowell of today? Both, because he always did the, he rubbed his chesticles. That's a no from me. This would be like a good interlude song, you know, like on an album you got like a real banger, then you throw this out there to like make people relax to get another banger, but like as a single, sweet baby Jesus, I'm sorry. I'm not going to be mad about music relating to drugs. This has been prevalent in the pop music scene for way longer than anybody would have thought, at least the 60s and 70s, if not further. What is gonna bother me is a song that is not only pushing P, but pushing, pushing P. It seems to be pushing this slang term as a brand of sorts. Because buying and selling Percocet 
clearly needs a brand, and Gunna clearly needs to be the brand ambassador. On capital P, I write the president, count president. And the song divulges into, into what I call alphabet soup throughout. What we end up with seems to be Push and P B S. Yes, I know that according to Future, P stands for Pluto, but that's not good enough for me. I should not need annotations for every single line in a song. This failed experiment of deconstructing alliteration comes off like a bet gone awry. At the beginning of these words, listen for the P sound. Well, I can only assume that a pesbian eats out your throat stoma. Just drop it down right here. She not a lesbian for peace, she turned pesbian. Hello. Your word is pesbian. Pesbian? Pesbian. Can I have the definition? Uh, the, the, uh, the, the definition is, uh, uh, it's a uh, meaning, uh, is something a female becomes in order to satisfy P. What is this, a math equation? C can you use it in a sentence? Uh, she not a lesbian, but for P, she turned pesbian. Pesbian. <sighs> Maybe they mean she has the Canadian candy you like? Pesbian. P E Z B I A N? <sighs> I'm so sorry. It's actually P E S B I A N. But thank you so much for joining us. And then we have chronic worst lister Young Thug providing the absolute worst enunciation of his entire rap career. <laughs> what? I just flush a cup of water. Even the genius annotation has no clue. I would take this as him having sex with a woman so wet that her nether regions feel like inclement weather regions. Flash flood, young thug in effect. But really, if you get off by sticking your depth finder in liquid with no resistance whatsoever, then I don't think this comes off as the flex you think, buddy. Sing along, we know the worst, kids. Roll, roll, roll your boat gently till I cream. Take the P and the F of bits, nigga, try to sword it. This poor soul might have a conniption once he realizes that the order of the alphabet exists for no reason at all. Any order will do just fine. And besides, someone can just insert a placeholder where no letter lies. You are cookie monster. <laughs> I really hate that this clip works for two different entries this year. A lot of words start with P, though. Yeah. Like, it could mean anything. Right. Petroleum. Pushing penicillin. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're in the emergency room and gonna future young we found that this guy's, sock, apparently. this guy's brain is Swiss cheese from syphilis pushing some pee <laughs> like yeah. pushing pee 450 milligrams via 450 milligrams of pee yeah pushing pee three men one letter zero cents Hey fellas, if you're really pushing P, perhaps these three letters are more applicable. UTI. Get yourself checked. Oh, UT, UT, UT starts with P. Gotta stop doing that. Speaking of blue menaces to society. <laughs> I will never forgive Bebe Rexa for reminding me about Eiffel 65. Surprisingly, we found this song to be not quite as bad as some of the other monstrosities on this list. However, the main thing for me about this one is that it takes a fun Eiffel 65 song and sucks all the life out of it. It is appropriate though that this song that means absolutely nothing samples heavily from a song that means 
Absolutely nothing. Blue was never supposed to be an earnest statement. It was just supposed to be a fun, silly dance song. Yet somehow, BB Rexa is dead fucking serious about having the best fucking night of her life. More like dead serious about raking in the millions from a cheap easy sample if you ask me. Oh, and the lyrics sound like something I could have improvised in the shower one day. The whole point of the song, to me, seems to be just like, oh yeah, I'm good with whatever, you know? Like the stereotypical stand-up comic thing. Oh, ask a woman where she wants to eat and she won't give you an answer. Ho oh, ho ho! David Guetta had a rough 2022. He made it his mission to remake several songs from the turn of the millennium, from Mary J. Blige to Benny Benassi. B.B. Rex's half-baked lyrics make this the least respectful out of all of them, but when Guetta proved capable of far worse things this year, Don't you worry. Then he skates by with just a warning. You're lucky only this one qualified. You're 55, dude. Shouldn't you go back to making tone-deaf tributes to the black community already? In honor of George Floyd, shout out to his family. Guess not. Oh, 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 oh. Three great tastes that taste terrible together, back once again to collaborate in a completely soulless cash grab. Shakira sounds borderline unrecognizable, the synth line sounds cheap, and it didn't qualify for DJ intelligence, so I can't really rip this to shreds as much as I would like. Perhaps it's for the best. Maybe you've gotten tired of me disliking the Black Eyed Peas even though they're clearly gunning for worse list placement. Holy fuck, holy fucking fuck. The body of yours is absurd. I do anything for it, that's my- Poor Adam Levine, man. So yeah, no Black Eyed Peas song for the 2022 videos. I guess we will, in fact, worry. Okay, well, most of us will. I'm assuming this song was popular because of the movie tie-in. You know, for a song affirming a lack of worry, this sure sounds anxious. The music placed this firmly on the worst list, and I knew it would make it the first time I heard it. This radio filler has no higher aspirations. One Republic, fresh out of musical ideas, borrows the whistling from their 2011 overplayed tripe Good Life. The awkward 140 beats per minute tempo of every indie hit pasted onto a commercial. The one thing that really irked me about it the most was really the drumming. It's a very basic pattern. There can't be anything a little bit more spicy, a little bit more exciting in there, or, or uh, something more original, perhaps. So the drumming was the, the thing that really uh, was a turnoff for me. And then, at the same time, the instrumentation didn't really pop out to me. It begins with whistling, and then it very abruptly changes to the full setup with the electronics and all these different effects and stuff. So I found this track also quite a bit abrupt. It goes from loud to soft extremely quickly, and so if you're not well versed with the song, it can kind of sneak up on you a little bit. Why, that bass tone sounds familiar, doesn't it? I Ain't Worried feels ripped wholesale from Feel It Still by Portugal the Man, complete with lyrics name-checking a random year. I would not put it past Ryan Tedder searching song, comma, 1986 to fit the Top Gun marquee and came across this as the search engine's first hit. It sounds like AI getting its song titles confused. Neither Prince nor Jacob Dylan had anything to do with Top Gun. I mean, at least Lady Gaga sounded like she was in the right decade. Tonight, tonight, I don't know what you've been told. You know, in case you failed to grasp that Top Gun pertains to the U.S. military. Except the chant goes, I don't know, but I've been told. Maggot. From a listening from a distance, I couldn't really understand the lyrics very well. Of course, when I have the headphones on, I can hear everything quite clearly, and once I know the title of the song, it all kind of clicks into place. But as a casual listener from a distance, um, the, the words didn't really come through very much. Even chucking out the more obviously bad lines, the second verse has nothing to say. No sensing, just obsessing with sealing the deal. Sealing what deal? What the hell does 
problems to feel mean. Speaking of ripping off Portugal the man, that band had a song come out in 2022 called No Joke. What? Me worry? Three months before this song came out. Ryan Tedder? I would worry about a lawsuit. Of course, you've tread this ground before, so... <laughs> Don't you worry about a thing, because everything's going to be all right. There's probably some Scientology uh, symbolism hidden in the lyrics. So if you at home want to dig in there and try to find it and, you know, give us a call. 1-800-TORGO Entertainment. I'm actually try to call that. It's something different. <laughs> So let's talk about the sweetest pie. Back when Levitating was big and everybody was talking about the remix and how DaBaby was, you know, not the greatest person, rumors started circulating about, hey, what if instead of DaBaby, we got Megan on the track? And so I saw all these really great mashups for Levitating using a different Megan song. And it was like, yeah, you know, it'd be fire. It would sound really good. And so they did something. Apparently they were inspired by all this and they made a song and it was Sweet as Pie. Unfortunately, Sweet as Pie is kind of half-baked. Uh, okay, so pie has firmly been entrenched as a euphemism for vaginas and cunnilingus, right? I got the flavor the less, yeah, the sweet as pie. Dua seems to get that. So why are all Megan's lines about cowgirls and butts? Booty like a pillow, he could use it while he's sleeping. I got cake and I know he wanna slice. I wanna put his nutty buddy in my fudge round. This song sounds like Megan Thee Stallion's final collegiate assignment, but she just could not stay on topic. Megan Thee Stallion wanted that pop single crossover and it just couldn't stick. Dua Lipa has more chemistry with the shambling almost corpse of Elton John than she does with Megan. Hell, Kanye West and the mainstream media now have more chemistry than these two. But for now, I am going to enjoy myself a piece of the sweetest pie. <laughs> yeah, this is better than the sweetest pie. That was not so bad. That 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 was not so bad, was it? <laughs> yeah, comparably. I like your soul. Yes, the remix qualified for this list. And you know things don't look good when no mention of this remix appears on the Wikipedia page for Lee Bryce, or Blanco Brown, or Rehab. Sometimes, you know, they'll put a dance beat behind something and it makes you want to never dance again. The original by Bryce alone isn't a great song, and the lyrical downfalls carry over here. Holy mother of Moses. The rhyming in this song was pretty terrible. It was like a third grader who's just discovered rhyming and is enjoying the fun task of putting words that rhyme together. I just wanna buy you roses. Open every door and close it. And kiss you from your head to your toeses. Look, this whole Moses supposes thing was cute back in the 1880s, and it barely skates by as a rare dark spot in the otherwise flawless singing in the rain. But this is 70 years ago. Get a new trick. Your body's got me weak. You Mozart in the sheets. Mozart? Mozart wrote poop songs. Like leak my arsehole. I want to put his nutty buddy in my fudge round. Tight than a bitch. You Mozart in the sheets. Because having sex with you reminds me of a four-year-old prodigy. Someone call Chris Hansen. I don't know, I feel like it's like four years too late. This guy's got a hat with a feather, and he's got this fucking arcade beats. How does he tell his family? Like, yeah, I'm a songwriter. I got myself I'm gonna dubstep Oscar Wilde. By putting a dance remix in it, it kind of destroys the purpose of the song, and it, it really sucks. It sounds awkward. It doesn't work great. There's a reason why this one's so high on the list. It just sucks. It's not fun to listen to. I have no idea what that sample is the Rehab plugged into the background, but it grates my cheese into an unrecognizable pile. The synth work sounds like a curious toddler found his grandparents' organ. So you got that heart made Blanco Brown's out here trying to oversing the most innocuous nothings. You love me to pieces. You're like my favorite days, baby. You the weekends. 
Women know a hard sell, Mr. Brown. Blanca Brown comes on to the song and gives this really, he's trying his hardest to sing this song out on a song that really doesn't deserve it. This isn't the time to go all American Idol and start singing like your life depends on it. No. Maybe this kind of stunt will work on like Ruth B, but over here in reality, not so much. This song is about anal sex. Opening every door that closes, kiss you from your head to your toeses. Every door that opens. He likes her whole, man. I don't know, I'm gonna say, you gotta pay the troll toll if you're gonna get in this boy's hole. I'm just gonna get gross on me. You can't play all the sexed up songs and expect me to listen to this just like, I just like the spirit of you and your soul so much that like I wrote this youth pastor fucking song. The original name for the song was Soul Sphincter, but they decided to make it a little less anal. I wanna put his nutty buddy in my fudge round. This song sucks. It's just obviously bad. It's also immensely popular, but if right-wing morons can ignore the consensus of the people, I can have this soapbox moment. You all got this wrong. Unlike this next dishonorable mention. All right, I'm gonna level with you. I'm gonna keep it real. I stood up for this guy. I stood up for that last single, claiming that he was just a misunderstood songwriter. Nope. Walker Hayes is the new Megan Trainer. Puts out a divisive first single that people don't know if it's a positive send up or just as exploitative as it sounds. And they put out the second single and basically wipe away any positive image that they had. It's pretty damn clear this guy's writing about world stuff that he's never experienced. It's kind of like popular country today. All flavor, no substance. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna eat my fancy like bachelor dinner. I'm that guy. I like fancy like. I thought it was satire. God, this song. Oh, fuck. I haven't heard it much. I need another. I'm gonna have to grab one of them cactus juices. But you know, here's the thing. The cost of trimming his beard was probably more than three meals at Applebee's. You have people who talk about like, oh yeah, I got a $200 haircut. Yeah, that $200, you know, beard shaving. I'm the only person that likes this song. This song is terrible. Sorry, you I are love the this song. <laughs> and the reason why is because it's a joke. And I get that it's a joke. Uh, you know what? Is it? It's it is just ripping on bro country and everything. Every single cliche, and I respect the hell out of it for that. Hey, well, that's what? the thing. Satire, if you don't realize it's satire, you end up supporting the enemy. That's right. You know what I mean? It, Applebee's being too stupid to realize that it's ripping on Applebee's, so they use it in their commercial as no fault of the song. Nope, this guy's just a dope trying to cash in on a lifestyle he aged out of over a decade ago. I find it quite the choice to, in 2022, release a song criticizing the benefits of therapy. And you've been sober for eight years. Mm. All flavor, no substance. What else can I possibly say but... Alan? We have problem drinking assistance and it's still your guest dick. I believe it's Alcoholics Anonymous. Is it Alcoholics Anonymous? It is. <laughs> I think everyone remembers it happened last Sunday at Dallas with the score tied at 10. They were headed towards overtime. Everything was cool. They were about to toss the coin to see who would kick off. Dallas, call him in the air. Tails. And that's it. All right. Come on, yeah. Tails. Tails. No, no, no. It's uh. That was no. Tails. No, it was no, 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 Tails. Hang on. It's uh. No, what did I say? Yeah, I said it's it's Tails. Tails. It's Tails. Tails. What are you doing? No, what are you doing? Yeah. Why? 2023 marks my 13th year DJing professionally in this area. But I stopped doing karaoke years ago. Remember kids, our annual family karaoke party is today. No excuses. Oh. Karaoke has been dying a slow death for 20 some years now. Barely resuscitated by cheap bars that don't know any better. This activity has moved from the group sing-alongs to the private booths of Asian-inspired city blocks. The medium has had its heyday. Country music, in its perpetual behind-the-times stance, wants to harken back to the good old days, which is code for pre-civil rights movement. But here we head back to the 1990s, and this... Is this an advertisement for a 25-year-old song? Heads Carolina, tails California, somewhere greener. So 
she had me at Heads Carolina, it's a complete bastardization of everything that made the original Heads Carolina and Tales California so great. This genre has had a perverse fascination with invoking the goodwill of older, better songs to trick its listeners to having their endorphins relate their fond memories of the old tunes with this newer schlock. Thomas Rhett proved extremely guilty of this in 2021 with the dreadful What's Your Country song, a piece comprising nothing but other song titles and lyrics. Let's see how many country songs we can name in this one song. Are you sure this wasn't out of satire too? Mm -hmm. So that's the whole song? That's the whole song. We're just going to reference other songs that were better and more popular by, by musicians. He keeps who asking all these questions. He's not asking like, does your daddy still whoop your ass when he drinks too much Jack? And what this song basically is, is remember when country music was good? We do. But we're not giving it to you oh, today. Oh, we're not giving it to you today. You gotta wait. Good country music is bygone for a reason. It ain't changing today. It's like, okay, are you gonna grow up to be like a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader or like a diner waitress? Those are your two options. Plagiarism knows no bounds south of the Mason-Dixon. It shouldn't surprise you, then, that Thomas Rhett originated the idea of this song, envisioning a duet between him and Cole Swindell in the same vein as The Girl Is Mine, the absolute worst song off Thriller. Rhett, realizing he would eventually be revealed as a complete hack as of late, stepped out of the project, leaving Cole Swindell to rot on his own. And to think you made my best list just four years ago. Nothing's wrong with the original from 1996. I don't know if it ever reached true classic status, but it has its charms, it has its fans. This, however, sounds like Cole Swindell wanted to cover the song, forgot the words, made them up as he went along, and released it anyway. After all that creativity that the music industry experienced during the COVID lockdowns, this is the best you can do? You only need to compare the intros, really. Messina's 1996 band plays the intro with swing and groove to it. In 2022, all I can hear are overprocessed garbage sounding guitars. What a fucked up acoustic guitar sound that started out with. I'd like to also know which synthesizer I need to buy to get that guitar tone because that is not a natural sound out of a guitar. Another past relic this song wishes to unearth is the loudness war from 20 years ago, because every instrument redlines and clips into a nondescript mush. No song should sound like the cheap, beat-up dive bar speakers it will inevitably pipe through. Making me wish current country production didn't suck so bad is not the same as evoking nostalgia, and the song really doesn't get better from there. Then we have, possibly, the flimsiest premise of a song I've heard in quite a while. And we had some flimsy ones earlier. Didn't know till we walked in, it was karaoke night. Hey! They have karaoke here! The rest of the first verse says nothing but, Hey! This girl's about to sing! And she does. She was up on the stage singing, It's Carolina, Tales, California. Why would I want to listen to a song about some guy... Hearing a girl karaoke -ing a song and then basically rips off half the song in the middle of doing the song. Ah, uh, it's just like modern country. It's all flavor and no substance. Maybe she'd fall for a boy from South Georgia. Swindell just popped a woody over a girl singing karaoke. No disrespect to Jody Messina, but the original isn't exactly the most difficult song to sing range-wise, so his standards must lie lower than the list of qualifications one needs to run for Congress in the South. And of course Cole swooned after Heads Carolina. If he had heard California first, he would have remembered that California was a blue state, and that completely wrecks his wistful recollection of those so-called times gone by. There's a big kind of trend in country music since the beginning of referencing older acts, you know what I mean? Like, almost like an homage. Yeah, you know, that's happened all the way up, you know, in, in like to Bocephus territory. I don't know, it seems a little bit less genuine, you know? I mean, you could even almost call Smoke on the, uh, smoke on the Water an homage, you know, since it was talking about the... You know, was it the Who or somebody was having a fire just across the lake? Frank Zappa's band. Was it Frank Zappa? I believe it was Frank Zappa's band. Also, I didn't like it because I feel like he would have said a racial slur by the oh ju God. judging his face. 
Don't put that in the video. <laughs> or do, I don't give a fuck. I don't know that song. It sucked. Like you can you can you can t literally rip off half a fucking country song in a new country song and still be like they'll be like, "Oh wow, it's look what he successful. did there." Yeah. Well, no, it'll still be like yeah. welcomed. It's like there's a much lower bar for creativity. What makes this even worse is that you all remember that Kid Rock song from several years back that heavily sampled Sweet Home Alabama? Singing Sweet Home Alabama oh, sweet home. Kid Rock did it better. He basically has at least some substance of country, which is funny because he's from Detroit, which is complete opposite end of anything country. I will admit there is a certain charm in the basic storyline of guy meets girl at karaoke bar. They fall in love together there. But this song just executes it in all the wrong ways, and that spectacular failure is why it's so high on this list. Cole Swindell is just like, hey, this girl's a 90s country fan just like me. She's a 90s country fan like I am. Hey, I got a Chevy. I have a car. Wow. She can flip a quarter. She has a coin that she can flip. Wow. That don't impress me much. None of these are exactly spectacular reasons for romance. All it makes me want to do is listen to the original. I'm sure every single person who heard this song on the radio was a 90s country fan too. They just endure Cole Swindell's tripe in hopes that maybe the radio will throw them a bone with Garth Brooks or maybe even a Joe DiMessina song right after it. The end of this song turns the already lightweight lyric into a complete nothing burger. Yeah, She's ugly! Then he saw her face and bounced. And wait, what about his friends? Did you abandon them to fawn over this chick? How does bro country not know about the bro code? In a year rife with covers and samples, most of them sucking awful, this one cheaply reaches into the vault to steal the goodwill earned from a past hit. Cole Swindell usually sucks on his own merits, but bringing someone better down with him serves as a grim allegory for parts of this country. No one wants to know about your failed booty call. Swindell hoped that all the vibes earned over the decades from the original would transfer over to this retread, but this dreck isn't worth the price one would pay for it in goodwill, where it will inevitably clog its 50 cent disc bin next to scratched copies of Sonic R. Hey, Cole! Here's a quarter! Call someone who cares. What will be mixed in with the others and become just a coin. Which it is. Speaking of how much of an unoriginal fraud Cole Swindell is, this guy had the sheer audacity to make a logo for himself that rips off the Creative Commons logo. No bar that is that busy has a bartender that is that happy and bubbly. Oh, no, it's, it's the customer service smile. Yeah. It's like, hey, let's just, come on, all right, let's go, let's go. It looks like a smile, but you're just gritting your teeth into nubs. Yeah. Is um, that, that a smile or a grimace? It's Jody Messina who did the original. Oh, oh, yeah. Is that a smile or a grimace? Yes. That's the check clearing is what that smile is. Okay, people. Torgo let me do a personal cut here, and I appreciate him for that. But this is what Fallen in Love feels like is my worst song of the year that made the list. They like song. My skin. So this is love. Acknowledging cliche songwriting does not excuse cliche songwriting. Jordan, take this one. We, we got this guy Jake here. Jake with a V. Junior Varsity Kinetic Energy. Which is somehow going in the route that I was least expecting out of any song that was remotely any kind of hit in 2022. A Rit Mommy knockoff. Because that's what we needed in society today, folks. More Rip Momney style songs. Yet somehow, more overall incoherent. Junior Varsity Kinetic Energy being a less passionate singer than Rip Momney. And the song jumping around musically more than that Put Your Records On cover. It just blows my mind. Just blows it to smithereens. <laughs> 2022 will go down in history books as the flyover state of the decade. The also ran of the decade. A meaningless wash of a year. We lived in the shadow of the pandemic panic. We continue to deal with issues such as insurrectionists, gun violence, income inequality, and other systemic problems that began ages ago. With no identity to speak of, 
It makes sense that much of the music this year reached back to copy notes off its older, more successful siblings. The list reflects this. In order, we've already dealt with a song from 2017, hours and hours and hours and hours and hours, a bad cover, a bad sample, Russ, Pesbians, Top Gun, a remix, and an alleged tribute. Not only have all these songs stunk, but they've all failed in different ways. Several hits in 2022 rip off their peers, but only one rips off himself. Oh, it hurts to talk about this guy. I love Elton John's music. This is every single album he's ever released, except for like a live one and that weird disco one he did in the 70s that no one likes. What's disco? Oh, nothing, sweetheart. It's something that happened a long time ago and it's never, never coming back. So don't you worry. And 21 at 33, which I'm not a big fan of. And that remix album from 2020. In 2021, Elton John released an album of throwaways from the late 1960s, but lacking the confidence and sales of that, he also released a bizarre remix album mashing up past hits, and Cold Heart performed the best out of all of them. The production from Panow helped, and while I never loved this, I saw it as nothing more than radio filler. Then the months dragged on and on, and this song just would not leave. Yet the moment it did, we had this to take its place. Ars Lander, what's happening up there? Oh, those are two different songs? It's just a worse cold heart. Honestly, I think I'd hear better collaborations on a sketch jazz album by Bobcat Goldthwait than Paris Hilton. I'm not sure her to be more mad at. Dua Lipa for starting this dumb trend of rehashing Elton John songs to a dance track, or Elton John for clearing the samples to begin with. Pinnell had no involvement with this song, but the rehash is real. Combine a song from around 1990 that contributes to the verses, Sacrifice for Cold Heart versus The One for this, a big 70s hit for the chorus, Rocket Man for the former and Tiny Dancer for the latter, and chintzy disco-like production just like that terrible Elton John album that I nor anybody really owns, that ignores all the forward movement EDM has made over the past decade. And you end up with this cheap cash-in. Producers Watt and Circuit have both made better music than this. Hell, Circuit actually got Ava Max to record some decent material for once. So maybe they aren't the problem. And no, Ava Max didn't qualify for the best list this year because it was ineligible, so don't get your knickers in a twist just yet. This just reeks of cashing in on Britney Spears' recent escape from her conservatorship in order to turn a fast profit. Who does this song think it is? Her father? Everything is good, and I am not trying to send people subliminal messages through my videos. I'm certainly not mad at her because it feels like she did everything to try to make music again without sounding like her or doing anything to appear in any publicity. She's probably worried her father will sue her for using her own image. I love Britney Spears. I love her so much. I respect her. I think she's amazing. Worry about her a little bit right now, but I literally love her and I think she's fucking amazing. This song, not good. But it's not because I don't love Britney Spears and it's not because I don't love Elton John. They're both amazing artists. This was just a weird choice. They don't sound good on this. She sounds too auto-tuned. She has a stunning voice by herself. I just, I'm not a fan. I like Britney Spears and I like Elton John. But do I think this song is worthy of a whole lot? Probably not. I thought I just—I thought I just had an episode, and I just—I I plugged back in. And I'm like, oh yeah, it's the filler part. <laughs> and then like, oh, I must have been—I don't know—thinking of the entire song is the filler part. Yeah, oh, that's it's, terrible. It's, so it's literally just like one of those like lazy remixes where they're like, yeah, yeah, you know, I really wanna like let's do a song like I'm—I don't know whether Britney approached Elton or Elton approached Britney. But I'm assuming Elton approached Britney because it seems like he's approaching like all these people. Wait, that was a Britney Spears song? That was Britney Spears who was singing, yes. What did she sing? What words did she sing in that song? Wikipedia states that Britney Spears spent no more than two hours on her vocals. I did not need to be told that. Whoa, 
yeah, that, that was could Elton be a John. John. That was not Elton John. I don't know. I I'm very. He's got a velvety. This. He's got a velvety quality, and there was no velvet. And this isn't even a, a critique on Britney Spears, but like, no, yeah, they're they're two different voices. Fuck, there. I'm gonna have to write the you best song ever written. You couldn't tell that there was. You couldn't tell that there was two voices in that song. I spaced out. I Fair thought enough. I was listening to the Elton John it's song. Easy to sp I know we should rally behind Britney after the 15 years of crises she has endured, but really, no one had any better material for her to bounce back with. She had to relegate herself to singing karaoke, she had me at Heads Carolina style, to a hastily assembled mashup of Elton John's past glories. Well, glories may be pushing it. Even though I like the one, Perhaps they should have chosen different lyrics. So you're dancing up the ocean. Uh, that's drowning. Much like this song tries to do for both of its singers' careers. It just leaves them to drown. Why is Elton John not playing a piano? Like, a stronger solo piano? Why didn't we do acoustic? Like, a more, like, unplugged bra piano with her? I, ugh. It just, again, it sounds like you're just forcing a techno beat on top of a song, and they do this all the time, and it drives me nuts. But this is worse. I wish it was, like, not so fast. I feel like they sped up the dancing to fit the song. Like, do you not feel like it was in, like, like fast forward? Like, we can pause. It's fine. I didn't mean to hit pause. It's buffering. Oh, it was too fast for the internet to keep up with. <laughs> the internet was like, stop. It's too much. Cold Heart, like, makes more sense for a dance song, like a dance, like, in a club song. Like a quicker. That's how we dance in a club, apparently. Just snapping. Just snapping and, you know. A little like Jam Brady. I'm like just snapping. Elton, enjoy retirement. You've earned it. With the money Elton must be making from this, you might as well go home to garbage, man. Brittany, I hope that those toxic pony checks clear so you can finally come back to the greatness that you deserve. Yeah, but as we know from the song, the bones are good. It's not always good. Look, I understand that we're finally starting to get out of this COVID pandemic and can ease up on social distancing, but the last thing I need is the princess of pop telling me to hold anyone closer while badly singing along to Elton John, like I'm at some karaoke night at Liza Minnelli's house. I'll stay distant. Thanks. Leave this experiment in the rubble of past legacies left forgotten. Just like the magnificent Ambersons left George's family behind in their failure to adapt with the times. Haha! -ha, bet you didn't think I was gonna come full circle on that one, did you? See? That intro had meaning after all. It wasn't random. I planned it. Take care. Did you, you didn't think that was gonna be number one, did you? On I didn't think list. it was gonna be number one on a worse list. I thought I just I, I thought it'd I be thought on I, the worse list. I thought I just spaced out for the Rocket Man parts. No. That song's a bastard, man! I was like, oh yeah, like they got the song where that Elton John and they sample Rocket Man and they sample Tiny Dancer and this is Elton John Oh My. I thought it was one song. No. And I've heard it on the radio and I just spaced out and I was like, oh shit, I just missed all the Rocket Man parts. Hey man, those Brits are, those old Brits are still making music. Ozzy made a new album. Yo, I Ozzy! Yeah, Patient Number Nine, which actually sounds pretty okay. decent. That's that's what I, my aunt, you know my aunt Kelly. Yeah. Yeah, she's like, any holiday, she's like, here's a bunch of edibles. We're going to put on some Ozzy. And like, that's... Okay. That's, that's yeah, that's just, that's the Why family dynamic. Why the fuck dynamic. didn't I get invited to this? That's a good question. I'm, you you were always jilted. welcome. I'm jilted. For some reason, Pope, that was a different song. <laughs> oh. 